moving forward. With that, Madam Chair, I yield back. Thank you. The chair now recognizes Ms. Lee from Pennsylvania for five minutes. Or five minutes? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. I must say I'm surprised to hear that my Republican colleagues care so much about protecting the, quote, safety, privacy, and opportunities of women since their voting record and priorities this Congress shows the opposite. A report l released last year in conjunction with the 50th anniversary of Title IX found that men's athletic programs received more than twice as many resources as women's programs in 2020, and that expenditures for recruiting and compensating head coaches and assistant coaches favored male athletes nearly three to one. Yet the 2024 appropriations bill did nothing to expand access for women in sports. It did, however, contain a rider to prevent the proposed Department of Education rule relating to transgender athletes' ability to participate in sports. Ms. Gossgraves, to your knowledge, do any of the bans preventing transgender students from participating in sports increase funding for women's sports? No, they do not. Do any of these bans improve playing fields or increase the number of women's teams? Absolutely not. Do any of these bans provide resources to expand recreational sports opportunities for low-income female athletes? No. While this committee purports to care about the safety of women, in 2021, when the House voted to reauthorize the Violence Against Women Act, 80% of the Republican caucus voted against that law. Not a single Republican member of this committee, nor our current speaker, voted for it. That bill included a provision to close the boyfriend loophole. Currently, people convicted of domestic violence against a spouse cannot purchase a firearm, but nothing prevents a boyfriend from acquiring one. Ms. Gossgraves, unlike gun violence, where the data is clear, is there any evidence that allowing transgender athletes to participate in sports presents a safety concern for women? Absolutely not. Because my Republican colleagues also claim to be concerned about women's privacy and opportunities, Let's also discuss the Women's Health Protection Act, which passed in the House last year and would protect and expand access to abortion care. Not a single Republican voted for this law. The right to abortion is rooted directly in the right to privacy. And research has repeatedly shown that the ability to access abortion corresponds with greater economic opportunities for women. Ms. Gossgraves, is there any reason to believe that allowing transgender young people to participate in sports threatens women's privacy or employment or economic opportunities? None of those things are threatened by the participation of transgender individuals in sports. Thank you. In fact, isn't there a risk that banning transgender athletes could lead to privacy violations, either through requiring documentation or invasive examinations? I, that it, there is a deep worry there, and some states have passed that sort of sex verification law, which would subject all women and girls to those sorts of examinations. Ms. Gosgraves, what should we actually focus on if we want to protect opportunities for women in sports? There is an opportunity right now to promote further resources to address sexual abuse that is happening in sports, to provide the sort of resources that mean more kids have an opportunity to play, and to advocate for, that the Biden administration finalize this rule that has been waiting for so long. That's where we are. We've seen these same misguided arguments before, rooted in false stereotypes, when athletes of color try to, and try to integrate white sports leagues who are accused of taking away opportunities from white athletes. Black women in sports, whether they are cis, trans, or intersex, constantly encounter shifting roles and expectations as a reprimand for their success. They are accused of doping or cheating in order to win. People make cruel remarks about their perceived femininity and create racist depictions of their physicality, all in attempts to discourage and exclude them from competing, and ultimately to keep them from winning. They were wrong then, and they're wrong now. I'm offended to see hatred and bigotry wrapped up in faux concerns about women and girls. We're talking about children wanting to play sports, wanting to feel included and accepted, I'd like to quote the Republican governor from Utah, Governor Cox's veto message, who said, quote, rarely has so much fear and anger been directed at so few. I don't understand what they are going through or why they feel the way they do, but I want them to live. I yield back. And I'll recognize myself for five minutes. Ms. Gaines, why is it patently unfair to allow biological males to compete in women's 